Zach here from Mythos Pedals, and today on why I made this, we've got the Mythos Chupacabra, one of my favorite overdrives that we make. Just like every other why I made this episode, we're going to talk about why I made it, what's the sound, who's it for, and are there any caveats. So, why did I make this? My favorite guitar sounds of all time belong to one guy, Mr. Billy F. Gibbons. Those first couple of ZZ Top records are a masterclass in incredible guitar tone, and they're so simple, yet really nuanced. I wanted to distill that personality down to a little drive box that when I click it on, it just immediately takes me to that Billy Gibbons zone. So I experimented for a long time with different circuits, iconic circuits, unknown circuits, me trying to force things out of, of circuits that I knew really well that were more or less my own, and nothing sounded right. Either it would work really well with a humbucker equipped guitar into like a cranked Marshall style amp, but it wouldn't work with single coils, it wouldn't work into a Fender amp or Vox or whatever. And so after a long time experimenting, I pulled out my Craig Anderton book, the Electronic Projects for Musicians book, and started messing with the tube sound fuzz. I knew that a lot of other great circuits had been based around that circuit, and I started experimenting with it and found that, yeah, it indeed is a fuzzy, overdriven, sort of unique drive circuit that works really well for that Billy Gibbons thing. It's based around a hex inverter chip, and it's a really interesting sounding drive. I tweaked it so it kind of lives between some other circuits of that ilk uh, as far as the gain goes. I retooled the controls so they, I think, work a lot more effectively. You have a more controlled sweep and taper. And I really shaved off a lot of the high end and tried to fight some of the noise because it's not really made the chip inside this isn't really made for making music, but it works for that. But because of that, it kind of hisses. And that's just part of the personality. And if you listen to any classic guitar recording um, with with any uh, intention, you can really hear uh, a little hiss happening in the background. And that's just part of the charm and personality. So what's the sound of the Chupacabra? Now, the Chupacabra, like I said, is trying to distill those ZZ Top tones, but it does a lot more than that. With the gain set low, it just kind of takes your amp into this tweed-esque realm. It fattens up the low end, doesn't add a lot of mid-range, kind of adds a little bite to the top end, but it just kind of changes the characteristic. And then as you start bringing the gain up, you start getting more of the saturation into an almost fuzzy-like feel but not necessarily a fuzzy sound. It kind of sounds like your amp. When you crank it all the way up, your amp is getting ready to pop, like the caps are about to die. And it, for any of those players out there who've experienced a vintage tweed amp or any vintage uh, Fender amp, if you dime it and it still has the original caps, right before they're about to die, that amp sounds really, really good for a few minutes. And then uh, the smoke appears. But... That is kind of the sound of this thing. It's kind of a tweed thing. It's got its own little personality, but it kind of skirts the line between overdrive and fuzz in a really cool musical way. It cleans up really well. It has a ton of output that is gonna get lost in, in this sort of demo, but you put this into a high headroom amp and turn the volume up and the gain down and you have a lot of boost on tap. It's really, really useful. Now, who is this for? This is for someone who wants to experiment with drive circuits that may not be as common to them. This is not a tube screamer. It's not a blues breaker. It's a different sort of feeling and sounding drive pedal. It skirts the line between overdrive and fuzz, just like I said, and it's really dynamic. If you're a player who really likes to use your volume knob and your guitars, this is going to connect with you in a way that a good fuzz will connect with you. It's a really fun and useful overdrive and something different to have in your arsenal of pedals if you already have a ton of drive pedals laying around that are all kind of of similar style. Now, any caveats? This going into a bright amp is not fun. An amp with a bright cap can sometimes make this sound really harsh and brittle. I think that's true across the board for almost any pedal going into an amp that has a pretty prominent bright cap, but 
for whatever reason, this one, it just becomes a little too much in the top end. Otherwise, it's a little noisy because that's just part of its charm and its personality. But I don't know. I can't really fault it because it does what it's aiming to do. It takes you to those Billy Gibbons type things, but does a lot more than that. And with a different style guitar, it works really well. It actually sounds really good on bass as well. So maybe if you're trying to get a Dusty Hill thing, you can do this sort of thing. But we're going to run through some sounds uh, for the demo here. I've got a uh, new Gibson uh, custom color 1960 uh, Les Paul from the standard line that they've lent me. Thank you, Gibson, for letting me borrow the guitars that were used in the intro and for this demo. And I also grabbed the Telecaster so you can hear it with both humbuckers and a single coil style pickup. Thanks for checking it out. Go to my website to learn more about it, mythospedals.com, but here is the Mythos Pedals Chupacabra. <laughs> 